Welcome to this tutorial for Boccia and in this uh, short video we will cover the basics of the plugin. Boccia is a plugin for footwear uh, modeling in Rhino and the first thing that we want to understand is how to get it. And uh, the easiest way to get uh, Boccia is once you have started Rhino you can uh, check the package manager so I'm just typing package manager in the command line and then I search for Boccia and here it is and I can get it directly from the package manager click on install and uh, this will keep it up to date when we will publish new versions and you will have it once I installed I will have this toolbar here and a number of panels in the um, in the panel window so there's the model outliner soft edit stitching and uv editor for the moment and we're planning to add uh, more and more as we go along so boccia is a plugin for shoe modeling or footwear 3d modeling and uh, we want to start that with uh, usually we start the modeling with the last so here I have it already flattened, but I'm going to start from a um, unflattened last. There it is. Can There it is. I have already this this last has been uh, quad remeshed for nice uh, results. If you start from an SDL, <clears throat> there is a very quick command in Rhino that is quad remesh that will allow you to remesh it and have it nice um, quad last. We remove the top and the footbed for um, easier flattening. So once I have this, what I want to do is I want to pick my UV editor. So if I have it, with here and dark, I'm gonna close it. I can go to the panel, to the little cog panel. If it's in, on the Mac, it's a bit different, but still, you go to the to the um, panel area, and I bring up Bocha UV Editor. The first button that we have here is unwrap the current mesh. I click there. There's a bunch of options. How many steps the algorithm should do? How large? The uh, UV size, the canvas size in the UV space is going to be. This is 50 millimeters, not enough. I'm going to go for 400 millimeters. And some options with sub Ds at the moment. We're having a mesh, so no sub Ds. Click the mesh, accept, and there I have flattened, um, flattened last in my UV space. But uh, very interesting. So, but I want it. Not in the UV space, I want it in my model space so that I can fit it to my pattern here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the third button, which drops down a menu. And I'm going to go to Add to Document or adding it, adding the flat and last to the document. So I'm moving to top view. And then I'm placing this. Oops, here it is, more or less more or less in the same space as my and my other lines. I'm going to make these lines a little bit more um, I'll make them red so that we can see them a little bit better. What I want now is I want to adapt the last to my pattern because the, the first step that I want to do is I want to project my pattern onto my last. So what I want to do is I want to flow the edges of the of the last onto the the mesh. So I'm gonna select these, isolate them. So now I have the edge of my pattern, I have my mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow 
um, the edge on these curves. So it's, this is the button, and it's B flow edge the command. There's a bunch of options. The read input, I say yes. Accuracy 100%. The more accurate, the slower it will take. Then I'm double clicking on my edge. Accept. Select a curve. Double clicking on the second edge. Accept. Select the curve. And the same goes for the last edge. And say accept. You see it's going to flow the edges. It's going to flow the mesh onto the um, the selected curves. There I have it. So it fitted my last onto the pattern I have so that um, it's exactly flowing as, as I want it to be. Go back to perspective view. Now we have it. If we click here, we have the you we see that the texture coordinates are the same this is very important in this next step because um the two uh the the last the original last and the flattened last that i just flew to my my edges have exactly the same uvs so you can see in the in the texture uh space that's uh that's the case so i'm gonna now select the curves. It's cell curve. And what I'm going to do now is I'm, I want to remap these curves from the 2D space in 3D space. This is the button. Remap objects from mesh to another. B remap objects from the command line. The source mesh, it's this base mesh. The target mesh is this 3D mesh. There I have it. Now the, the render view, I can see, is a little bit better. See that I have uh, already basically pre-visualized. This has some nice transparency to it, so I can see it through also. Um, I've flown the um, remapped lines from the 2d to the 3d and i can remap a number of other objects i can remap sub d's i can remap um, meshes i can remap surfaces surfaces are not really uh, the best for remapping but uh, meshes and sub d work work and curves works very well and i can see that i also had some curves here that goes out of my mesh doesn't matter they get remapped nevertheless and they get remapped more or less you can see it did there's there's some jitter here so let's go back here there's some some jitter in this remapping because outside of the mesh space doesn't really know what what to do but it went well nevertheless um Interesting thing to notice in this, in the remapping, is again the UVs. The UVs need to be the same. Now, usually, when you flatten something, automatically you will get the right UVs. So if you flatten the last, and then you will um, manipulate the 2D mesh, the UVs will stay the same. So it shouldn't be a problem. But if you want to have different objects or uh, remap from 3D to 3D. It is important that you check, always check that your UVs are matching. Um, good. So, what else can we do? A very interesting thing that that we can do is once we have this 2D version, we can start modeling in 2D and then remap it in 3D. So I'm just, just going to take like a very small part here. Let's let's take uh, this, this part here in the back. I'm going to use a curve Boolean to just get a nice, um, nice closed curve that I want to make a part out of it. 
And what I want to do now um, is I want to create a quad, um, a planar quad mesh. And like this, it's fine. I'm satisfied with it. So now I have my planar quad mesh that is uh, created with a kind of a rough, not really a precise um, part. And this is on purpose because there's another very interesting feature of, of Bocha is, and these are the modifiers. Modifiers are fine in the, in the property panel. Whenever I select a mesh, I can add a modifier. This is a concept that is, if you've ever used Blender, you will be familiar with. This is something that we've added to Rhino. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to thicken this part. So you can see that now it got uh, a little bit thicker, but it didn't really change the geometry, but it just changed the Rhino render mesh. So this, if I want to have it thicker, so instead of one millimeter, I want to go to three millimeter, you can just change here and parametrically this will update. So the modifiers are very interesting for parametric workflows. And um, these are going to be your bread and butter when uh, you're dealing with parts, because um, if I have a design change, I will not have to rebuild the entire model, but I will just go through my modifiers, change a bit, change a couple of meshes, and then I will have a nice and clean um, remapped part. Another thing that I can do is I can weld the edges for example, for having cleaner, uh, sharp here edges. And uh, the last that I'm very interested in is the sub D. I like the Rhino sub D is gonna be as if you convert it to a Rhino sub D. If you use Cadmo Clark, it's gonna use the Cadmo Clark subdivision surface algorithm. You will see that yeah, depending on the, the kind of workflow that you want to achieve, one is going to be better than the other. I like Rhino sub D, so let's let's keep it with that. And reduce a bit the welding angle. And there I have it. Now, if I want, I can also change a bit this mesh. Because, um, of course, maybe here it's not exactly flowing the way I want it. Um, you can go to top and enable the render view. So here you see what it how it looks and here is my is my mesh. And I want to move a bit these to make sure that, that this is flowing the right the right way. And to edit this I'm gonna use the soft edit. Soft edit is quite nice. There it is. And I enable it, a panel pops up. It's a nice feature that will allow you to um, basically not just edit the mesh itself. But as you can see, whenever I select a point, it shows me a heat map of, okay, this point is going to move a lot, but then the rest of the mesh is going to move alongside. Now, this is a bit too much. I want to reduce the influence. So I'm going to go for you know, uh, 15. It's probably already too much. Yeah, go down to 10. The soft edit will allow me to change my mesh nicely and adapt it to whatever whatever I want. So I'm going to re-enable your D. Move to bottom view. So here I can easily change and adapt my my mesh, then match the curve. And this works also when I'm then 
I want to, I don't know, pick some, for example, a um, an edge here, and I want to move it a bit up because of whatever reason. I can use the soft edit and then get this nice, um, nice effect of the part flowing just nicely. Now, once I have my 2D part created, what I want, what I want to do is I want to get it in 3D. So I'm selecting it. I'm going to use the flow, the remap, sorry, and remap it in 3D. Now, now I have this nice 3D part that I created very quickly and very effectively without um, too much of a problem. I can still manipulate that in 3D, of course. Grab it, move it around, and change it as I as I please. Uh, but then the the best way to do this is if I do the remapping with history enable, and then I go for remapping this part from this mesh, this mesh. What then I can do is then I can take the 2D part. I'm just going to move it a bit. And as you can see, when I move it, it's it's also updating in the 3D. Move it quite drastically. See that then it updates automatically, also in the 3D part, which is which is very nice. Um, the last thing that I want to show you now we have started here with a um, a model that already have a where I have. I already have a pattern, but it may happen that you don't have a pattern. So I'm going to delete all the curves. I may not have all the pattern. Uh, and the only thing that I have is an image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import an image. It's a, it's a picture. One on one. And what I want to do is I want to project this image onto my last. Going to make it a bit transparent. And uh, line it there. So I got it aligned. What I want to do is I want to use this button, project an image. Here there's there's some options. There's one important thing also here, that this, uh, the UV, the, the mesh where I'm projecting to need to be unwrapped. And there's need to be UVs, otherwise the projection will not work. So I'm going to project from here to here. It's going to take a while. And it's going to generate an image with your projection onto that mesh. So here we see that basically we go to the this view. And I'm going to hide this object. Here we are with this image that has been projected and here in 3d it's my projection very cool thing that i can do here is that this is then generating a a material that is this projected texture 001 and what i can do is i can pick this platen last and i can go to my projected texture 001 and I can go to render mode, and there I have basically the projection is now flattened. And from here I can 
get my lines. Um, in the same way, in the same way, I can also, if I have like a Illustrator design, I can project my lines onto the mesh and then remap from the mesh down to the 3D. So if I have lines here, let me reset this and uh, use an interpret curve. I'm going to go persistent mesh and this mesh and pick two things. Here I have these um, line on the mesh. So what I want to do is I want to remap it from 3D to 2D, 2D. And of course, some weird thing happened because it's not perfectly on the mesh. So yeah, but I can work project. There it is now. I've projected it onto the mesh, and uh, I can remap it from 2D to 3D. There we are. Now I have my line that was on the mesh on the 3d mesh so if i project it for example from illustrator design i project it onto the last then i can remap it in 2d and have lines that i can work with and this basically covers uh, the most basic functionality we're going to make some more tutorials to cover some more advanced functionality but uh, at least you know how to install and uh, the basics of the UV editor and how to flatten the last and uh, to create parts. If you do have questions, uh, you can refer to our community or uh, write any, us an email and uh, have fun with your modeling. Bye.